U.S. Representative Phil Rowe has announced that he will be holding a town hall meeting in Greenville on Monday night at the Greene County Courthouse. The town hall will be held from 6 until 7.30 Monday night. Doors will open at 5 o'clock for seating on a first-come, first-served basis. Since being elected to Congress in 2008, Representative Rowe has held more than 40 live town hall meetings in the 1st District. Monday's town hall meeting with Congressman Phil Rowe is free and open to the public, and no tickets are required to attend. Parking will be available in the parking lot of the Greene County Courthouse after 5 o'clock Monday. Attendees are reminded that the use of cell phones is prohibited inside the courthouse. A teenager was taken into custody Thursday afternoon after a student at South Green High School reported receiving online threats to the safety of herself, her family, and another student. A female student contacted the school resource officer Thursday morning concerning a Facebook Messenger conversation she had with a 16-year-old male student. The conversation reportedly included various threats to the safety and well-being of the student, her family, and another student, along with an implied threat to a specific class at South Green High School. The Sheriff's Department notified the administration at South Green, who in turn notified Director of Schools David McLean. The Criminal Investigations Department was put in charge of the investigation and arrested the male student around 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon. The teen was transported to the Upper East Tennessee Regional Juvenile Detention Center to await an appearance in juvenile court on a charge of harassment. Three people were charged with criminal trespassing after they were found inside a unit at Greenville Terrace Apartments Thursday afternoon. Management had issued notices to 36-year-old James Hensley of the 8700 block of Baylington Road, 30-year-old Krista Hensley of the 2500 block of the Kingsport Highway, and 19-year-old Dakota Hensley of Bristol. Greenville police received a report Thursday afternoon around 3.15 that the Hensleys were in an apartment and all three were taken into custody. Bond for each of the Hensleys was set at $1,000 prior to their initial court appearance on Friday. A representative from the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development visited the Greene County Tennis Center after awarding a grant to the center. Reed Seals has more. Brittany Grogan with TDEC visited the Greene County Tennis Center on Friday. TDEC awarded the Tennis Center a Tourism Enhancement Grant. The grant will be used to put in highway signage for the Tennis Center, Softball Fields, and Hunter Education Center. The Greene County Tennis Center is free to use and is owned jointly by the town of Greenville and Greene County. Junior tennis tournaments are held in May and September with players coming from Tennessee, North Carolina, and Virginia. An adult team event is held in October. For Radio Greenville News, this is Reed Sales reporting. According to the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development, the state's unemployment rate for January was 5.4%, up from 5.1% in December. Tennessee's rate a year ago was 4.8 percent. Over the past year, non-farm employment increased by 58,800 jobs, with the largest increases occurring in trade and transportation and utilities, leisure and hospitality, and professional and business services. The national unemployment rate was 4.8 percent in January, up slightly from 4.7 percent in December. County unemployment figures will be released next week. The Greenville Board of Mayor and Aldermen meets Tuesday. They will hold a public hearing and consider on second reading on whether or not to make Human Resources Director Patsy Fuller the Americans with Disabilities Act coordinator. The board will also consider the purchase of an asphalt roller for the Public Works Department and appointments to the Greenville Parking Authority. The Greenville Board of Mayor and Aldermen meets Tuesday at 4 o'clock in the G. Thomas Love Boardroom at Greenville Light and Power. The Atlanta Pops Orchestra is teaming up with former Celtic woman vocalist Chloe Agnew for an evening of music at the Nicewonger Performing Arts Center on St. Patrick's Day. The show is Friday, March 17th at 7.30. The Atlanta Pops Orchestra, best known for entertaining audiences worldwide with a diverse repertoire of arrangements for movies, Broadway shows, and popular tunes. Ireland's Chloe Agnew rose to fame as one of the original members of the singing group Celtic Woman, with whom she honed her rich, beautiful voice and warm spirit. Agnew and the Pops will be joined at the NPAC by special guests Irish tenor Dermot Kiernan and Celtic dancer Scott Porter. Celebrate St. Patrick's Day with Chloe Agnew and the Atlanta Pops Orchestra at the Nicewonger Performing Arts Center at 7.30 Friday, March 17th. Tickets are $40 for orchestra, $35 for mezzanine, and $25 for balcony. Tickets can be purchased in person at the box office, online at npacgreenville.com, or by calling 638-1679. The Governor's Rural Task Force has launched a new website and resource database for Tennessee's rural communities. It features comprehensive information about the task force and a searchable database that catalogs available programs and resources. The website is a recommendation that was made by the task force in its October strategic plan. 
The site includes information from nine state departments and six task force community partners. The website is designed to provide Tennessee's rural community leaders and citizens with a single source for information about technical assistance, loans, grants, and other community development programs. More details can be found online at tn.gov slash rural task force. New legislation has been introduced that would impose tougher penalties on illegal opioid and prescription drug suppliers. House Bill 786 would enable law enforcement to charge illegal suppliers with voluntary manslaughter when they cause death to a user by unlawfully distributing or delivering controlled substances. In 2015, 1,451 Tennesseans died from drug overdoses, and the state consistently ranks at the top of the charts nationally in regards to prescription drug abuse. House Bill 786 comes a few days after House Speaker Beth Harwell created the first-ever opioid and prescription drug task force. The group within the General Assembly has the immediate goal of working on legislation and determining best strategies for tackling Tennessee's opioid problems. For more on our news, visit our webpage at greenville.com and sign up for our mobile news alerts by texting the word NEWS to 59457. With a look at your world of sports, I'm Jim Miller. Girls basketball sectional games tonight across the state. All games tipping off at 7 o'clock local time this evening. In Class AA, the Greenville Lady Devils will be on the road at Gatlinburg-Pittman. The tournament tip-off show will begin coverage at 6.30 on AM 1340 WGRV. And in Class A tonight, South Green will be home to take on Meigs County. 6.30 pregame coverage with the tournament tip-off show on 103.1 FM WIKQ. Tonight's winners will advance to the state tournament in Murfreesboro. The Class AAA and AA state tournaments begin Wednesday, while the Class A state tournament gets underway on Thursday. Boys sectional games will be held Monday night across the state. The Boys state tournament begins Wednesday, March 15th. The Vols wrap up the regular season this afternoon as they host Alabama at Thompson Bowling Arena. The Vols have lost three in a row and have fallen to 7-10 and in the SEC and 15-15 and overall. The Crimson Tide are 10-7 and in the conference, 17-12 and overall, and still in the running for a double bye into the quarterfinal round of next week's SEC tournament. Game time is 1 o'clock this afternoon and Vol Network coverage starts at 12.30 on 103.1 FM WIKQ. After six seasons at the helm of the Tusculum College men's basketball program, head coach Mike Jones announced his resignation on Friday. Jones compiled a record of 53 wins and 115 losses in six seasons with the Pioneers. In 20 seasons as a collegiate coach, Jones has 267 victories. Tusculum will begin an immediate national search for a new coach for their men's basketball team. The SEC Women's Basketball Tournament continues today with semifinal action. 5 o'clock tonight at South Carolina against Kentucky. And at 7 o'clock tonight, Mississippi State takes on Texas A&M. The winners will meet Saturday on Sunday for the SEC Women's Basketball Championship. With a look at your world of sports, I'm Jim Miller. A Bulls Gap man was arrested Friday night after nearly colliding with a Greenville Police Department cruiser. 19-year-old Tristan M. Scherfe of Oasis Road was driving a black Mitsubishi Eclipse when he pulled across the 11E bypass and nearly collided into the police car. The officer initiated a traffic stop, noticed a strong odor of marijuana, and asked Scherfe if there was anything illegal in the car. He replied that there was a burnt marijuana cigarette inside the vehicle. A search of the car produced a baggie with marijuana, empty plastic baggies, and digital scales. Scherfe was charged with failure to yield, violation of financial responsibility, possession of a Schedule Six drug, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Bond was set at $2,000. A court date is scheduled for Monday. A Greenville man is facing charges after allegedly taking tools from a construction site last weekend. 25-year-old William K. Stroud of Black Oak Street is accused of taking nearly $3,000 worth of tools from two construction trailers on Holly Creek Road belonging to Idell Construction Company. Among the missing items were a metal and concrete saw, a miter saw, several cordless drills and batteries, an air compressor, and a nailer. Total value of the tools was approximately $3,200. Stroud reportedly admitted to possessing the tools and later selling them. Stroud was taken into custody on Saturday for theft over $1,000 in connection with the incident. His bond was set at $2,500 and a court date is scheduled for tomorrow. A Jones Bridge Road man reported a scam to the Greene County Sheriff's Department on Saturday. The man said he received a phone call from someone who said that he had missed a jury duty appointment. 
The caller told the victim that he needed to send $500 as a self-bond. The victim told police that he sent a $95 and a $65 PayPal card and also gave the caller his debit card number. At the time the report was filed, it was unknown if any money had been taken from the victim's bank account. The investigation of the incident is continuing. A West Andrew Johnson highwayman has been taken into custody on an assault warrant from last year. 22-year-old Charles A. Justice was taken into custody for an aggravated assault incident in September in which he allegedly put a 40 caliber pistol to a woman's head and threatened to kill her. Justice was also wanted for violation of probation. Bond on the aggravated assault charge was set at $10,000. Justice is due in court on Monday. Thefts have been reported from two Dollar General stores. On Friday afternoon, a man and woman came into the Dollar General on Van Hill Road and took an undetermined amount of makeup. There was no video footage available of the incident. The two left in a Chevy car. On Saturday afternoon, a woman came into the Dollar General store on Tusculum Boulevard. The woman was caught on video surveillance taking various items from the shelves and putting them down the front of her pants. The two thefts are under investigation by the Greenville Police Department and the Greene County Sheriff's Department. A North Carolina man is facing charges in Greene County for reckless driving. 26-year-old Carl B. Hyatt of Hayesville was reportedly traveling south on Asheville Highway on Saturday. Hyatt was observed by police following extremely closely to another vehicle while overtaking a slower moving vehicle. He was observed traveling 86 miles per hour in a 55 zone. Hyatt had four occupants in the car, including a small child. He was charged with, re with reckless driving and will appear in court on Monday. And the South Green Lady Rebels advanced to the state tournament on Saturday with a 94-48 win over Meigs County. The Greenville Lady Devils ended their season on Saturday with a loss to Gatlinburg Pittman. The final score was 67-56. to For more on our news, visit our webpage at greenville.com and sign up for our mobile news alerts by texting the word news to 59457.